Welcome to another Foldit Lab Report. I am BCAT here at the Institute for Protein Design with my colleague Ian H. If this is your first time tuning into a Foldit Lab Report, we produce these videos on the first of every month to tell you more about the science behind Foldit. This month, we have an exciting announcement for all the students, teachers, and educators out there, as well as those of you that have played Foldit before, but have always wanted to go deeper into the science behind the game. We've opened up education mode inside Foldit. Previously, these education puzzles were only available as a beta version and only as a separate Foldit download. But now, these expanded puzzles are available to all of our users, and they can be accessed from the main Foldit game in the puzzle menu next to the campaign and science puzzles. So what is education mode? This game mode helps players learn some of the core scientific concepts behind proteins and their 3D structure. This underlies all of biology. It extends concepts from chemistry into the life sciences and can give learners a much richer understanding of how life operates at the molecular level. Foldit is already used in many classrooms by educators who want to give their students a hands-on learning experience for biochemistry. The information covered in Foldit Education Mode is ideal for high school or college learners who have a special interest in science. But the education puzzles are also designed so that anyone can work through them at their own pace. In Education Mode, you'll start by learning about the 20 amino acids and the basics of protein structure. Then you'll learn more about some of the essential mechanics in Foldit, such as wiggle and shake. The final puzzles show how protein design can be used to fight viruses that cause COVID-19 or HIV or Ebola. And once you've completed education mode, you'll be much better equipped to tackle our weekly science puzzles, which is where the real research happens. With Foldit science puzzles, you can apply your understanding to make real progress in groundbreaking protein science and solve problems that we don't yet have the answer to. And speaking of science puzzles, that brings us to this month's puzzle updates. In September, we saw lots of binder design puzzles for targets like TGF beta receptor and IL-2 receptor and CD47. These are all proteins that play crucial roles in the human immune system. If we could create binders that target these immune proteins, those binders could become new drugs for cancer or autoimmune diseases. We also saw a batch of symmetric design puzzles with a lot of symmetric tetramers this month. Symmetric protein design opens up possibilities in new protein materials, which we talked about in this video. Link in the description. In the next month, keep an eye out for some small molecule design puzzles, which will make use of some brand new tools for designing chemical ligands. For this month's design of the month, I want to look at a design by NSPC from puzzle 2043. And this is a CD47 binder design puzzle. Now to recap, CD47 is a protein that acts as a friendly signal and it's displayed by healthy cells to prevent your immune system from attacking healthy human tissue. The problem is that certain types of cancer cause overexpression of the CD47 and this acts to camouflage the cancer so that it can evade your immune system. We'd like to design a protein that could stick to CD47 in these cases and help your immune system recognize and attack cancer cells. So in this puzzle, at the bottom, we have a section of the CD47 target that we want to bind to. And up on top, we have a three helix bundle design by NSPC that may stick to the CD47. Right off the bat, uh, this looks like a very solid three helix bundle design. We have lots of blue hydrophilic residues on the outside and a strong core full of orange hydrophobics. The interface where this binder contacts the target has lots of orange hydrophobic contacts, and that's good. Those contacts will make this sticky so that the binder will prefer to stick to its target. And what I particularly like here is that it looks like this binder has pretty good complementarity versus the target, especially this tryptophan here right in the middle seems to stick right down and present a lot of hydrophobic surface area um, kind of in this nook on the target. And that, that could be a very strong interaction. And in fact, we see that 
this design has actually a very high contact surface score, almost, almost reaching the maximum 400 uh, contact surface score. So that's a very good indication already. I like to look at these proteins with CPK coloring, so I can see where all the polar nitrogen and oxygen atoms are. And I like to see the hydrogens as well that can make hydrogen bonds so that when we look at the, the hydrogen bonds in this protein, we can see where certain atoms are, are making their necessary hydrogen bonds. And particularly, I'm on the lookout for buns. These are buried, unsatisfied polar atoms that can cause problems. Now, what I, another very strong feature of this design is we see that NSPC has satisfied a lot of the polar atoms on the target that are buried upon binding. Um, and this is good. This is necessary when this binder comes down and associates with the target, we risk burying polar residues on the target that would like to make hydrogen bonds with water. And so in order for this binding interaction to be favorable, we need to make sure that we satisfy those polar atoms with hydrogen bonds. And NSPC has done a very good job of that. I especially like this interaction here in the center with a, a tyrosine uh, that reaches over to a glutamine to satisfy this, this buried, uh, looks like a, a, a glutamate or aspartate there. So, so this, is, this looks very nice. Looking for trouble atoms, we can turn on the buried unsats objective. Uh, we see a few buried unsats back in here. Um, in particular, there's a threonine down here that, that looks very lonely. This threonine is, is normally exposed to water and, and can make hydrogen bonds with this polar oxygen. But if NSPC's binder were to try to bind this target, it would bury this threonine and deprive it of hydrogen bonds. Um, so that could, that could interfere with binding. That could cause this binder maybe not to bind. It also looks like NSPC has this binding in a way that breaks a hydrogen bond that might normally satisfy these atoms. I might not be too worried about that in this case. It looks like those could maybe come together. Uh, there are um, some other atoms here, like this, this berry tryptophan, which we think will make very tight hydrophobic interactions with the target. Also has a polar atom here. The buns objective does not flag it, so we think that probably there's enough surface area available for water to come in and make a hydrogen bond there. Even if the buns objective is a little bit wrong there, I wouldn't be surprised if this, um, if this lysine here could swing out and allow water to get in um, and satisfy that, that threonine or that, that tryptophan. So this looks to me like a very, very promising design. The only other thing I'll say is that alpha fold predicts this three helix bundle to fold with a confidence of only about 74, 75 uh, percent. We normally like to see at least an 80 percent confidence in alpha fold predictions. So I would wonder if we can mutate other residues on this three helix bundle so that uh, it might be predicted to fold up more stably. At the same time, I would not want to mess too much with this interface. This looks like a very nice interface to me. So hopefully we would be able to make some mutations away from the interface uh, to help this three helix bundle fold up. All in all, this is an excellent binder design by NSPC. Please, please, please share your favorite solutions with scientists in all of our science puzzles. We love to see what you think are your favorite or your most promising designs, even if they don't score at the top of the leaderboards. That's all we have for this month. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next time.